My name is Patrick Larkin and I am Executive Director of Rancho Santa Ana Botanic Garden in Claremont, California. We're the largest botanic garden solely dedicated to California's native plants. And it's my pleasure to record this message as part of the Voices of the Future project for the Center for the Future of Museums. When I was growing up as a child, my parents actually took me to a lot of museums, um, particularly natural history museums, zoos, uh, botanic gardens, those sorts of things. And so I grew up um, standing in amazement as, as at what would now be considered sort of the classic dioramas, or these large displays of insects um, uh, that um, are disappearing. And at some level, I'm, I'm sorry to see that happen. One of the trends that I see happening uh, and continuing to happen going on into the future as people and kids uh, become more accustomed to seeing on television and in the movies um, these replicas of things um, almost realistic and lifelike that um, the museums are going to continue to go in that direction to try and illustrate how things might have been um, and at some level almost disconnect from the object itself um, and helping people to actually imagine and use their, their minds for themselves about the ways that um, things might have been. Um, but that's not always the case. Um, but uh, certainly I think as the demand for um, more and more information and almost being handed things directly rather than having to, to think for themselves to, to be able to think either creatively or in um, or in some kind of way that actually uh, stretches them. Um, it, it's one of the things that, that concerns me that might be happening. One of the other trends that I, I see happening and continuing to happen is that the rate of change in society is, um, is just going to continue to increase. And I think that those institutions that are able to adapt to that, that are able to um, come up with new and different ways of interpreting their collections, um, new and different ways of actually attracting audiences, to be able to react to changes and trends um, in as short a time frame as possible. Um, those are the institutions that I think are, that are going to be most successful, are going to be the ones that are actually going to you know, be around uh, long into the future. Um, that all, probably also means that, in fact, some of our planning schedules are going to have to actually be on shorter time frames as people uh, continue to be accustomed to the 24-hour uh, news cycle and getting information immediately from the internet. Um, the, the information that people are gathering um, from the internet and from all of these other sources that are, are widely available now um, oftentimes actually puts our interpretation in our institutions um, uh, out of date uh, almost immediately as soon as it's printed. So trying to figure out those new and different ways of being able to respond to that, react to that. I mean, even within the, the plant world, uh, botanists are regularly deciding that uh, a plant is no longer classified in this particular way, but it's actually classified in this particular way. Or we're learning new ways about which um, things are actually related to one another. And so that, that research is ongoing, and so to affix um, almost a static interpretation to an object, whether it's a plant or an arrowhead or, or a, um, a painting, um, at some level limits our ability to actually let the visitor, let the scholar actually know all the information that's available. So figuring out new and different ways that, again, that we can respond in a very quick fashion as information becomes available to update um, what we know about particular objects. The, uh, the challenge certainly with uh, um, institutions and fulfilling their, their public trust, um, I again, I see that as something that is going to be continuing on into the future. And I think those institutions that are able to respond to that in a positive way are able to take that message seriously those are the ones that are going to um, that are going to be around. Um, I worry about the smaller institutions that um, already struggle under the weight of so many rules and regulations and um, obligations with regard to reporting and accounting and human resource uh, rules and regulations. Um, it's part of business, yes, but the the fact is is that we just keep getting more and more of these sorts of things and so it cre creates a larger and larger burden not only on small institutions but on small business as well um, 
And so it becomes more and more difficult. The cost of doing business uh, increases and the complexity does as well. So I think that there's actually an opportunity that's out there that I, I think has been partially explored about um, consortial sorts of arrangements um, where I think that the more that institutions can figure out ways of actually working together, collaborating together, figuring out ways that they can actually share resources, um, even if it's a merger um, where you're, you're bringing two institutions together and yet they're e able to keep their own individual brands, um, I think those are ways that, are, that we're going to be able to respond to some of these issues with regard to um, the increases in regulations, but also the increased expectations with regard to uh, the public trust in terms of uh, making sure that we're transpar as transparent as possible and getting that out there. Um, that also means that I think that there will be fewer institutions going on out into the future, um, new startups and things like that. Uh, I don't think that we will see as many happening as um, as folks take a closer look at what all is going to be involved, what all is going to be required with actually starting up an institution. But I would say that all in all, I'm very hopeful about the direction that museums are going. Um, I'm actually uh, very, very pleased with the way that folks have responded thus far um, with regard to the increases in scrutiny as well as the public uh, accountability. I think it's made uh, museums stronger, made institutions stronger, and uh, will do much more um, in the future. Um, I think the lines between entertainment and museums um, will continue to be blurred, but um, again, I think that that's an opportunity for our institutions to capitalize upon. Um, yes, at some level, it's it's a it's a little bit of competition that's out there, um, but I don't think that it's always bad, and I think that there are ways, and I think there are very creative ways that many institutions um, are responding to be able to bridge that gap between the way that people are, are, are being entertained um, to actually connecting people to the objects that are in our collections and for which um, we have an obligation to hold on to them, maintain them, and, uh, and be able to interpret them and hold on to them going into the future. So uh, thank you very much for uh, listening to me and um, I was happy to be asked to be part of this project.